Good afternoon. It's Friday, September 24th, 2010. I'm Jill Eckhart with your Ernerberry Market Report, sponsored by NAM's sixth edition Meat Buyer's Guide. Today, foodmarket.com is reporting on Thursday, Secretary for Food Safety Dr. Elizabeth Hagen outlined the USDA's vision on modernizing the department's food safety efforts on behalf of consumers. She emphasized that the most important purpose of the USDA's FSIS is protecting the health of more than 300 million Americans and acknowledged that too many people were at the risk of getting sick from the food they eat and that needs to end. You can get more information on this story and other news from the center of the plate at foodmarket.com. As an added reminder, if you haven't already checked it out, our newest food service video is now available online. Check out Mai and Joe's visit to Luigi's Deli and Meat Market, as well as a Q&A with Ernerberry Market reporters uh, Marianne Ziccarelli and Russ Whitman dealing with turkey breast meat. Check out all of this and more at ernerberry.com slash video. Now, let's set the tone. In the egg market, retail demand is fair, trading volume is limited, as is acquisition interest. There's virtually no interest in selling product, the market is steady. Looking at chicken, industry players will be glad to see the weekend come given how poorly market conditions have deteriorated over the last few weeks. The front half of the bird continues to be pressured with sellers forced to entertain low bids to keep the wheel turning. Wings are the best item on the sheet and are held with confidence. Wogs and whole birds are unsettled with movement irregular at best. Talking turkey, hushed undertones are permeating the turkey market right now as lack of supply is keeping business patterns irregular and buyers reaching out for more. The most sought after items include drums, wings, two joint wings, thigh meat and all white meat or trim oriented lines. For each load that shows up, there are multiple buyers and only the lucky one or two getting covered. Now with a seafood market update, here's John Sackton from SeafoodNews.com. Uh, we want to highlight today, today is the last day of the NFI uh, convention in Chicago. Uh, there's about 200 uh, people who've shown up and they've been working pretty hard. Uh, some of the highlights of the convention was um, presentations uh, to Trident Seafoods and American Seafoods uh, by Second Harvest and Sea Share for serving, uh, for donating each over 10 million uh, seafood meals to fight hunger in the U.S. Uh, some of the talk at the meeting has been about the uh, run-up in seafood prices, which uh, is really affecting people across the board. Uh, for example, uh, one distributor said uh, to me on the bus that his uh, actual seafood inventory cost this year is up 35% across the board compared to where he was at this time last year. Uh, today, on, on Friday, uh, the meeting is going to hear a little bit about uh, the economic cost of seafood fraud. Uh, and also, uh, there's some en encouraging uh, news in terms of consumers uh, understanding about the health benefits of seafood and, and some uh, survey trends that uh, seem quite positive uh, in this direction. Uh, finally, one other interesting thing which we're going to follow up uh, in the next couple of weeks is a movement uh, in the Pollock industry to try to establish uh, good manufacturing practices for twice frozen Pollock which would limit the amount of moisture added. Uh, people have been finding that the non-chemical or so-called chem-free uh, Pollock often has a very high amount of moisture added and, and the industry is interested in getting some standardization around this so that uh, outliers uh, can be eliminated. Anyway, uh, it's been a very good meeting and um, I hope that people will pay attention to NFI. Uh, in Chicago, Illinois, this is John Sackton. Thanks, John. Moving over to Red Meats, the first look at the box beef market today reveals additional discounts to move strips, short loins, and top butts as beef processors have recently struggled with finding clearing levels of most of their loin cuts. The peeled tenderloin is the exception when looking at the loin complex and product is well cleared near term. In the boneless market, this morning has been a typically slow Friday throughout. Most participants are calling the leaner bonus beef steady to weaker. Supplies are reportedly still readily available in some regions. The market for fresh 50s is about steady. In the imported market, an abundance of fresh, lean, boneless beef continues to pressure spot imported beef pricing and trading levels are down a dollar for BC90s and 85% grinding materials. Most other items are quiet and unchanged so far this morning. 
Looking at pork, lower bids for cash hogs are expected today from well-supplied packers. As a result, direct market hogs are called flat to weaker. Terminal hogs are rated steady. Hams and bellies appear to be under some pressure this morning due to lagging demand, while fresh trimmings have a more firm feel to them. For the most part, the retail pork complex seemed to turn around yesterday as availability tightened. Loins and butts are called steady to stronger, spare ribs generally steady. That's your Ernerberry Mid-Morning Tone brought to you on Comtel by NAMP's all-new 6th edition Neat Buyer's Guide.